I have some very good close friends who have, let's say, not very typical, but let's say not very adaptive kids. Um, they have kids who are a little bit hyperactive, mm -hmm. um, noisy, um, maybe somehow physically aggressive towards objects or even to other kids. Mm -hmm. um, is there a strategy in mm -hmm. order to get a different result? I don't know how to express it. Yeah, I understand, but I want to split your question into two. It's not the same to talk about a kid who is um, uh, unusually energetic mm -hmm. and hyperactive. Yep. Is, should not be confused with a child who is aggressive to other people. The first may be completely healthy, uh, just sometimes inconvenient for us. Right. And, if, you know, if, if, when, when, when parents ask, you know, I, wanted, I want children who are, who are quiet, who don't make a mess, who don't make a lot of noise, I say to them, you know, maybe you should have been raising tropical fish instead of raising children. Uh, this comes with the territory, you know? Um, so if the question is, how do I make my child who's five years old sit through a long family dinner, mm -hmm. um, I say the request is not legitimate. That's not what a five-year-old can do. And if you manage to force him, uh, you're, it's going to be at the expense of either his health, healthiness or your relationship with him or both. But it's very different to talk about a child who's, who hurts another child. Mm -hmm. That is a problem. Um, and that we try to address by helping the child to see that hurting people is wrong because of its impact on the other child. If you punish a child who is aggressive, if you send him to his room, right. if you take away a toy, if you yell and shame, if you slap... You're visiting friends and you send him to your car, for example. Yeah, that's right. You, can't, you can't stay there anymore. Mm -hmm. This doesn't teach children to be less aggressive. This comes back to what we were talking about earlier. This just teaches a lesson of power. The mm -hmm. reason not to hurt people is if I'm caught at it, I will be made to suffer. That child hasn't been made less aggressive, more sensitive, more moral. That's why we have to help the child see that the problem with hurting people is what it does to, to the other child. So I might say to a young child, do you, you remember when you were running very fast down the stairs last week and you tripped and you hurt your leg and you cried? I think that's the way you might have made John feel. What do you think you can do now to make him feel better? So we, we induce the child uh, to consider the impact of his action. We draw his attention to how it affected someone else. That's very different from you've made Papa very angry. And, uh, and, and now I learn I can't be the way I like to be around you, not that I hurt other people. And we see the results of the punitive approach with parents who punish children for being aggressive. Yep. The people grow up to be just as aggressive and just as self-centered, if not more. Um, and sometimes they apply that to other people in subtle ways and sometimes not so subtle. And here's a point that many people don't understand. We think the alternative to punishing people for doing what's wrong is to give them rewards or praise when they do it right. To say, good job, I really like the way you were so quiet and helpful and obedient. I really like it when you're well behaved. Have a sticker. Have some candy. You have, this is no better. This is still a doing to approach, not a working with approach. It's still about pleasing the parent. It's still about conditional affection, right? Positive reinforcement. It doesn't mean I love you no matter what. It means I seem to love you only when you please me. Or worse, when you please me, not for being spirited and curious, but for please me for being like a piece of furniture. You know, where we, we seem to prize docility and compliance. So the goal is wrong and the method is wrong if we want to raise mm. children who are 
who are healthy and curious and ethical and happy. How will you translate in terms of psychology the real reaction of one of my real friends talking about uh, spanking, uh, talking about different types of parents? And I quote, I was spanked, but that was good. Mm -hmm. That was very good because it gave results. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate this now. End of quotation. Well, let's, let's start with the word results and then move to the word appreciate. The second one troubles me more. Right. Uh, empirically, we can show that the results that, that this gives is only temporary obedience. And as I mentioned, with very disturbing long-term implications for how we look at other people, being self-centered versus compassionate, um, being eth ethical in any sophisticated way versus a very simplistic moral code. What does it do to our psychological health, our view of ourselves? All of this very clear. Mm -hmm. The results are uniformly disturbing beyond getting the child who's fearful to sit down and shut up. It also tends to create people who are fearful of their own parents. Um, not respectful in any meaningful I sense of agree. that word, unless we define respect to mean terrified. But the saddest part of this comment is that the person apparently has internalized this warped way of treating people to actually not even be able to rebel, to have fully uh, taken in, swallowed in, the psychologists call it introjected, this view that this was good for me and I benefited from it. Part of this, I think, is because we are desperate to believe, even on an unconscious level, that our parents wanted nothing but the best for us and did everything they did out of love. Here I'm borrowing from the work of the psychoanalyst Alice Miller. Um, and we are so desperate to believe that, so so afraid of questioning that premise that we have to believe it makes sense and to prove it I will do the same to my children. It can take enormous courage to take a step back and say this was wrong. This did me no favors. I can forgive my parents for this lapse but first I have to recognize it as a lapse. Yep. Um, what do you think about homework and competition uh, hmm. within school? I mean, um, I do have to tell you that Romania is part of the educational system where pupils have hard and very consistent homework. What is your opinion about that? I will also give you a perfectly real example of people solving tens or even hundreds of math problems. Uh, in the summer holiday, for example. Um, I've written another book about this. I wrote it uh, the next year after Unconditional Parenting. It's called The Homework Myth. It's not available in Romanian uh, yet, I can say, hopefully, um, which reviews the research on homework. The disadvantages are clear to any child or former child, which is that homework um, is almost uniformly despised by children. Um, it tends to make them frustrated, exhausted, takes away time from the things they care about and give them pleasure after having spent a whole day in school. Now they have to begin what amounts to a second shift, you know, when they get home. Um, and it tends to make children less excited about learning. It, homework may be the single greatest extinguisher of curiosity yet invented. So now the question is, are there powerful advantages to it to compensate for the obvious disadvantages? And the answer is no. I've read all the studies, mm -hmm. scientific studies I can get my hands on. The first thing they show is no benefit academically at all for children who are below about age 15. Mm -hmm. To the best of my knowledge, no research has ever found any benefit to any kind of homework for younger children. Even for older children um, in secondary school, uh, very questionable. There is only a, um, a mild correlation, statistical mm -hmm. association, mm -hmm. between doing more homework 
and having higher scores on certain tests, but it's not clear that the homework caused the higher scores, because you can imagine that certain other variables might have led to both. Plus, test scores are not a particularly good indicator of meaningful intellectual proficiencies. That's a whole other book, is why standardized tests do not make sense. Um, moreover, no benefit has been found in other ways of homework. The idea that it causes kids to learn good study skills, independence, mm -hmm. self-discipline, um, uh, no research su supports this, this folk wisdom. So basically it turns out that homework is, is all pain and no gain.